All right, so I guess this is happening. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the inaugural episode of D Mike Plays. Uh, it's been a while, been a long time uh, since I've uh, been in the driver's seat of something like this. So, um, decided to get back at it and uh, see how things go. For those of you who are coming from uh, my old channel, welcome back. And for those of you who are here for the very first time, welcome. Hopefully, you enjoy yourself, you have some fun. Uh, this channel, this Let's Play, everything that's going to happen in the future from here on out is basically going to be pretty chill, pretty relaxed. Um, you know, just like to have some fun, nothing, uh, no pressure, alright? So don't feel pressured to, to overexert yourself. Just, you know, sit back, relax, have a snack, maybe a sodi pop, and enjoy yourself. We're going to go ahead and do normal mode. Um, I've beaten this game many times before, but... Uh, I'm not feeling fancy. This is not MLG Pro Gaming here on the D-Mike Plays channel. This is more of a, uh, just a cash, cash sesh. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into normal mode. And I think we'll just stick with the default link. Uh, we'll get goofy in the future with how we play around with names and etc. Based on how you all react and kind of what feedback you give me. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead with classic link and get started. So I don't know how any of you feel about this, but uh, just hearing the uh, titular song for Link's Awakening um, kind of gives me chills. This was my uh, this is my first Game Boy game as a kid on the big old fat gray brick Game Boy. Got me through many long car rides on family vacations and moves all over the country. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and this game is very successfully uh, attributed to the original. It's very similar. Uh, they did a great job as kind of a faithful recreation of that. Obviously, there's been some changes to it, but uh, as you'll see, it's pretty It's pretty faithful. It's pretty good, um, and a lot of fun. So our boy Link here, as you saw in the intro screen, uh, washes up on shore of Koholint Island and is... Uh, rescued and brought here to the home of Marin. And assumedly her dad? Taryn. Okay, cool. So this, uh... This nice duo here rescues us and lets us stay in their home. Um, very kind. And we get our shield back. So that's pretty neat. Now, one thing of notice uh, that's a little different between this and the original, um, I may put up some examples of the things in, uh, in the post-production of this episode. I might not, I don't know. But something that is different that you'll notice is there's little platelets here and here that... Uh, they don't mean anything yet, but we'll come back to those later and you'll see uh, it's kind of a cool little bonus thing that they've added into this into this version of the game. <laughs> so Marin wants us to go south. Uh, and she warns us of monsters. So that sounds pretty spooky. Don't want to have to deal with that. We'll see who's down there waiting for us. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this game and the other similar, um, it's similar to the Game Boy games, is that uh, they kind of went with the top-down view again. Um, not quite as extreme as before. But what you'll notice is that uh, just walking around here in uh, the the home area of the game is uh, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a blurriness to the top of the screen. Uh, that's an effect known as tilt shift, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think it kind of complements this art style, kind of like a claymation art style almost, which is really nice. Um, and in, I think that it just kind of gives it more of like a kind of a cute appeal, whereas uh, the originals were just kind of your typical Game Boy fare. So you'll see right away, uh, very similar, you know, there's the Cuckoos, there's the Bow Wow. Um, as everybody likes to point out in this game, there are many uh, throwbacks to Mario. There's quite a few of those in this game. They kept them in, the, in here as well. And there's actually more than there used to be. So that's something to look out for. So we were told to go south. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 
this part of the game as a kid is uh, really cool just because when I first played this, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, it took some kind of getting used to, and they kind of set you up in a really nice way. Uh, you know, it's your standard Zelda fare, but it's still a lot of fun. And it kicks off the game kind of in a cool, hero-y way. Alright, so clearly, everybody is very upset with us. We've done something wrong. Everybody's very mad. I don't take personal responsibility, so I don't know what Link did. But uh, apparently being unconscious shipwrecked is a capital offense on Kaholan Island. But we are uh, given this kind of uh, ambiguous mission to wake some windfish. We're apparently not happy with our stay on this island, even though we've only been here for maybe hours. So our, uh, our new winged friend, the owl, tells us that we need to go north to some mysterious forest. So first we're told that we have to, upon being shipwrecked and unconscious, we're told that we need to go down to these to this beach where we wound up almost dead, where there are monsters, and now we're being told we need to go to a mysterious forest. So clearly the hospitality of these guests on this island are not very high. So, I mean, if this was like an Airbnb or a Yelp review, uh, maybe one or two stars. I don't know, it seems kind of, uh, kind of dangerous setting us up for failure. But anyway, this is our sword. We only know that because it's in red. So apologize for, or pink, apologize for you red green color blinders. But we're given the, uh, our first taste of, of weaponry. Uh, this game is a little different in that, um, the sword and shield are, uh, locked to the B button for the sword and the R button for the shield, respectively. You can't change that. So for all of you A button sword users in the original game where you could swap buttons for different weapons, uh, in and out on your Posman, you can't do that now. So you're kind of stuck with this. It's not really a huge deal, but it does let us kill these uh, spinies here. And these are the Link's Awakening oop, HD version of, uh, of Octoroks. So you can block their attacks with your shield. You can kill them with one swipe of your sword. Pretty cool. Nothing like a little bit of, uh, you know, casual genocide to the new place that you wind up on. It's actually recommended upon visiting as a tourist to Koholan Island that you uh, try to kill as much wildlife as possible. It actually kind of makes you feel more a part of the community. It's pretty cool. So they showed us that we've got, they said there are monsters down there. We've got the Spinies, we've got the Octoroks, uh, children. So Koholan Island is full of mystery and uh, clearly very dangerous entities all around. So we're supposed to go to that mysterious forest, but if we come up here for a second, we can see that Marin has come outside, and uh, will sing us a tune, but um, apparently Terran has beat us to the forest. That's weird. Oh, huh, okay. I'll we'll have to check out what he's doing up there. That's the uh, kind of the theme song of the game. The windfish, the lullaby of the windfish. But prior to going up there, once you do have your sword, you can collect some hearts with slashing these bushes, but that's not where we're going here. Let's go ahead and fall down this well. Our self-preservation uh, as a new resident of Koholan Island isn't very high, by the way. So when you fall down there, you'll notice that if you've played a Zelda game before, this will net you your very first piece of heart. A piece of heart will, when collected in quantities of four, expand your life bar from three hearts to four hearts. You'll get a heart every time that you get four. So that's pretty cool. And it also refills your heart gauge. So it said that we could check out the, uh, the sub menu here by pressing start. So it's very bare right now. We don't have anything to show for ourselves. Um, but you can see here that we've got a sword, our sword, our shield. A green tunic, that's what you start with. That's the kind of classic Zelda fare for Link. And then here is your 
little indicator of how many pieces of heart that you have gives you kind of a heads up on what you've got going for yourself. So we're supposed to head north to this mysterious forest, which sounds dangerous and very spoopy. Um, and apparently there's moblins ahead. So I don't know what's wrong with Terran and Marin, but clearly these people are not looking out for Link. They don't really have him kind of in, uh, kind of in their hearts. They just have to set him out into, into the wild unknown. Second visit from the owl. Yeah, this game starts out pretty cryptic. Uh, in general, it's not really like a... There's no really like a, a gotcha moment. I mean, there is supposed to be at the end, but realistically speaking, uh, um, if you know how to follow kind of like a basic story, you'll pick things up, by the way. And they kind of rewrote this a little bit to be more kind of on the nose and to kind of, you know, give the, the reader a little bit, or the player, a little bit more of a heads up kind of what's happening. It's, you know, they already kind of spoil it early in the game, but you can put the pieces together. So we're told that there is a, a tail cave, which is south of the village. He's asked if we've ever visited it. So clearly this owl, uh, not communicating with Terran and Marin, there's a bit of a disconnect uh, community-wise, which is kind of disrespectful. You know, you would expect this group of people to uh, kind of get together and, you know, figure stuff out, especially with like somebody that's brand new. Like, you know, where's the welcome party? Where's the apple pie? You know, the barbecue on the block? So, a bit of a disconnect amongst uh, community residents here, especially on with animals who can talk. So the tail cave is south of the village. Uh, that sounds kind of ominous. Cave. Just like monsters being down there. Uh, I'm not sure why everybody keeps trying to direct us down that direction. It's kind of rude. Uh, you know, we're just trying to get our bearing, you know, regain our senses, and we already have uh, a father-daughter pair and then an owl trying to put us in as much danger as possible. So... And we're apparently being watched by an omniscient windfish, who we don't even know who that is. So, feeling a little hostile right now. The hostility of this island, a little, a little curious. So here is um, one of the first uh, looks at moblins that you'll get in the game. This is kind of just your standard fare moblin. Uh, Gel, Zoles, those are in this game as well. Uh, these moblins will throw a spear at you, but they can be blocked with a clever attack of the sword. It's easier to attack them from behind if, if you're into that, you know. Nobody expects you to come up at, on the back door. Um, so go ahead and give them a couple quick slashes. Block their spears if you need to. We'll go ahead and head into this uh, little tree trunk here. These are keys? Uh, as far as I know, keys have been in most every kind of Zelda game. They are the harbingers of frustration and annoyance. Um, once again, they can also be killed in one swipe of the sword. So they're not very threatening, but there are iterations of them later on in the game that can be very frustrating to have to deal with, especially when your hearts are low or if you're trying to accomplish another goal. Opening a chest here will net us 50 rupees. It's our first chest of the game. That money will come in handy. Uh, once we're back in Mabe, Mabe, however you'd like to say it, Village, uh, there's kind of a cool little mini game that we're going to play uh, before this episode concludes. So there's another piece of heart in here, but unfortunately those two skulls that are in the way, uh, we can't lift those yet because uh, part of being an adventurer that you have to realize is that when you wake up unconscious on the beach, um, it's a muscle beach, and Link is actually uh, being encouraged to go down there um, as kind of a way to persuade him to get swole, and we're not quite there yet. So in order for us to take care of those skulls, we have to go down there and uh, pump some iron with the locals, fight some monsters, and uh, show them what we're made of. So that time will come. So here is a bit of an advanced enemy. Uh, this is the Sword and Shield Moblin, who will come after you. Uh, he's very aggressive. So clearly, uh, somebody woke up on the wrong side of the... Uh, of the tree trunk today. Disrespectful. We're brand new here, and we're already being attacked by the locals. So, uh, we're gonna ignore that for now. We'll come back to that. But, what we did come here for is this. So, Link, 
uh, connoisseur of shrooms. He's a big fan. Uh, so that is our first kind of pseudo uh, usable item, kind of a key item, we'll say that, but it's temporary. So it says it's a bizarre toadstool that grows in the mysterious forest. So clearly, um, when you wake up in a new place and you're instructed to go to a very dangerous forest, it's recommended that you spend your time uh, trying to pick up as many potentially harmful substances as you can. So you didn't hear that from me. However, on Koholint Island, uh, that's kind of the way to go. It seems to be uh, a pretty successful uh, way to have a good time. So exiting that area, uh, we need to do something with that mushroom. But first, we got to see if there's anything in this uh, little subsection of the game here in this forest that might be a little unusual. Things on this island, you'll notice there's a trend that they don't quite uh, seem as they appear. As you can see here, apparently... There's a raccoon in a forest. And he says his nose is very sensitive. Very sensitive. So he's he's uh, he's Spanish. He's sensitive to stuff like dust and powder. Okay. So that's really weird. Um, I guess the raccoon being sensitive to dust and powder is not weird. You know, that's just kind of typical forest fare. Raccoons, foxes, squirrels. Um, large blue pig enemies with swords and shields. I mean, you'll find that all over... All over the world, you know, go to a national park and you're guaranteed to, to bump into something like that. However, we can exit the forest here on the right. And in doing so, it brings us to um, another teased piece of heart that we can't get. An electrified blob enemy. That's a Zora, for those of you who are familiar. In this game, they're pretty aggressive too. It's just kind of the, the early trend of Koholint Island um, lack of hospitality. Kind of uh, kind of big old jerks. But we've got kind of a spooky little foresty thing here. There's some tree trunks and a large skull of some creature with horns. So let's go ahead and walk inside because that's normal. That's what you should do. Always investigate your surroundings, especially the spookier they are. And we get a visit. Or we're technically visiting. We are intruding. Uh, we're trespassing on a witch. But she notices that we have our toadstool. And we apparently uh, use our telekinesis to give that to her. Or she steals it from us, however you'd like to look at it. And in the process of that uh, unintended exchange, she gives us a bag, a nice little sack of magic powder. All right. So... This is our first equipable item. As you can see, we have 20 uses. And we are able to add this to the X or Y button. It doesn't matter. Either is uh, is fine. I'm just going to go with Y for simplicity's sake because it's what's the closest to my finger. And you can see kind of this little torch here. One's lit, one's not. Let's go ahead and toss some powder on that torch. So she encourages it to use it on our enemies. And if we go to that same area, you can go pick that toadstool up bring it back to her. However, she will charge you in the future. I believe it's 50 rupees. So not quite worth it. You'll find that uh, there are future locations in this game where you can get it for free and in large enough quantities that you'll never really need to do that. So we'll go ahead and ignore that. But she said use it on an enemy. So why not? On this uh, little, I forget his name, but I'm such a bad Zelda player. Uh, that guy gives us um, you, the electricity that you would face if you touched him without the powder, oh, that'll shock you. But uh, because we're not doing that, we use our magic powder very wisely, as we were instructed to do. And uh, no harm, no foul. So we've got that powder. And curiously, that raccoon mentioned that he was allergic to powder. So, you know... We've gone from our time spent with shrooms to our time spent with magic powders. And it sounds like uh, we can do a little experiment here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so he's having a great time. The time of his life. Oh, 
Well, look who it is. Would you believe it? Taryn turned into a raccoon. So Taryn, um, also a connoisseur of, uh, of shrooms, had himself a nice little snack and turned into a raccoon. So in the future, folks, if you wind up venturing into a forest and you see a delicious toadstool and you take a bite and then you turn into a raccoon, make sure that you have a friend who uh, you meet washed up on the shore of an island to sprinkle magic dust on you. That's the only way. So Taryn's just gonna take a nice little trip home after his psychedelic adventure. He's had enough for one day. Let's open this chest. All right. So the tail key that we were warned of by the owl is now able to be accessed with that key. Okay, well, great. Uh, thanks for spoiling it. And he says there's an instrument there. So maybe this is his attempt to kind of pacify the situation. You know, I set you up in this very dangerous location on this island that you're unfamiliar with. And so maybe a little music to kind of uh, calm your nerves. You know? We'll see what Link knows. He's clearly adept with a sword and shield, so uh, maybe he can slay the masses with a little tune. How about that? All right. So, we're going to go down to the tail cave in the south by the shore. However, I did mention that there is a fun little mini game that we're going to try. This is in the original as well. However, it's a little different. This is uh, a bit of an up updated version of the original version of, uh, I said version twice. It's an updated version of the original. It's pretty fun. It's a crane game. And it has been made a little tougher in my opinion, um, kind of the, your depth perception is going to be tested here. If I screw this up too many times, I'm probably just gonna cut until I succeed at what I'm trying to do. However, in this, uh, in this era, you can see that you have multiple prizes. Looks like there's a, another bag of powder. There's a shield if you, for some reason, lost yours, but uh, have some respect for your belongings, jeez. There is a purple rupee, another 50. There is a piece of heart, and there's a, what appears to be a Yoshi doll. So let's give this a, uh, give this a try. Ah. Mr. Trendy Gamester wants us to give him 10 rupees, so we can do uh, seven tries, seven flat tries before we screw up here um, and can't uh, pay our mortgage anymore. So we'll be out on our behind. But if you get that purple rupee, then you get five more tries. So let's try for that, uh, let's try that rupee first. So you can see in the upper right, the instructions say to move forward with X and to move right with A. Now that little spotlight underneath the crane is the thing to pay the most attention to. That's very important. If you wanna to try to get that right over top of the item you're going for, not too high, not too low, because if you don't, when the claws open and come down, they might nudge it to the side, knock it over and make it hard to grab, which is kind of frustrating and you'll have to try again. You'll have to come back out. So we'll go ahead and give this a try. And it's very finicky, so you don't want to push the buttons for too long. So that might do it. I might have gone a little bit too far to the right. We'll see. The claws will cinch together. The rupees have a tendency to kind of flail around here. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. Um, I was just going to give the rupee one try. Um, but it is very tempting, so we will play again. Uh, this time, let's go for the piece of heart. That is not going to do it. So that's one of the things that makes this kind of frustrating. Um, is that the original was a little more forgiving in how you were able to do this. This version is kind of... Um, it's kind of hit or miss. You have to be kind of on the nose in order to be successful at this. Uh, the other version in the original... Um, the things kind of spun around in like a cube. Uh, that's not going to do it either. They spun around in a cube, which made things a little bit easier to grab the items you were after. Um, oh, that might do it. Unless the uh, piece of heart decides to be... Alright, well, I was not expecting that to be successful, so... That's our second piece of heart. That's pretty cool. Two pieces of heart in one episode. That's a pretty pro move. 
uh, as far as I'm concerned. So let's go ahead and try for that Yoshi doll here. Right over top. Everything that's kind of uh, programmed into this game, the physics, are a little wonky, and they kind of flail around in, in the crane, which makes it a little tough to predict how it's going to go. The farther away an item is, the more likely that it is going to travel when it's pulled through with the crane down to the little prize area, and that it kind of decreases your chances of getting it. So if you can pull the rupee, you might take two tries to get it closer to the little uh, conveyor belt. That might make it easier for you to collect your prize. Let's go ahead and get the piece of heart. Got two of those now. Pretty cool. And the real prize is the Yoshi doll. So that's pretty cool. Only uh, 10 rupees a try. Pretty cool, pretty fun. And uh, Suni, this child, who I don't believe had a name before, but why not? Um, says that their mom is desperate for a Yoshi doll. Now, uh, the Yoshi doll is the first item of the eventual trade quest that we're going to do throughout the game that nets you a pretty cool item at the end. Uh, most Zeldas, especially the handheld ones, do have trade quests, which is a lot of fun and kind of cool to to put together and you know keep exchanging things. It's like the paperclip for a Porsche of Kahola Island. His mom actually lives up here. So if we go in this house, we can complete a little bit of the trade quest today. We're not gonna do too much of it. And you can see that she's got a little pedestal here in her house as well. She has these two. We'll find out what those are for later. She asks us to give that Yoshi doll. So is she a choosing beggar here? Like. Um, kind of demanding. That's kind of cr oh, oh, she's gonna give us something back. Okay, so clearly, uh, Yoshi doll for ribbon, fair trade. Uh, ribbons are going for a ton on the Koholit market nowadays, so that actually might have been a win on our side. We kind of might have. Uh, she might have kind of got shafted on that one a little bit. Sorry about that, mom. We do need to do something with that bow though, and if we come in here to the Bow Wow house. We can talk to Madam Meow Meow. And it says, she sees our ribbon and she says that uh, her chic baby Chow Chow needs a new accessory. So if we come over here, we can see Chow Chow hanging out. We're feeling generous today. So we'll go ahead and do a little Yankee swap. And we'll talk to Chow Chow. So Chow Chow is into high fashion, and clearly this ribbon is uh, kind of top of the top of the line fashion accessory. And she's willing to give a, a meal. So maybe this is some sort of like uh, an indication of kind of uh, some of the failings of the fashion industry. You know, willing to give up food for fashion. Like, oh, jeez, that's quite the commentary, Nintendo. Jeez. All right. So we've got ourselves some dog food. So if we ever get hungry, being an adventurer is pretty tough. I mean, it would be nice if there was like fruit on the island, but you know, when in doubt, dog food it out. So we're gonna head back. Instead of heading directly south, we're actually gonna head east a little bit first. And we're going to uh, make our way to the tail cave that we were told to head to like four times now. So, um, beat a broken drum, will ya? Come on over here. We do have a key in our inventory. That looks surprisingly like that. Weird. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this key in this keyhole. That's what they're made for. That feels good. All right. Nothing like a little breaking and entering. Okay, everybody. So, this is where we're going to leave off for today. Uh, we made some pretty good progress. We're going to come right back at it in the next episode. And we'll check out kind of all what the, uh, the dangers and the mysteries that the Tail Cave has to offer. Stay tuned for more. And uh, make sure you keep it real, everybody. Keep it cash. I'll see you next time.